Instagram for sponsoring a portion of today's episode. Okay, so we polled you guys in the comments what kind of video did you want to see us do in this petite kitchen. It's right off the studio. And we're gonna do 10 plus ways on how to make your kitchen look expensive. I did some really good On a budget. <laughs> what did you just zoom into my face? If you've been along on this journey with us, you know we are trying to take this tropical island fixer-upper up a notch with quick and inexpensive design touches so we can enjoy our new home and welcome family while we simultaneously plan a big overhaul to make this house into our ultimate dream home. Recently you've seen us make a garage into a colorful planty office and Joey take his turn at decorating a bedroom all on his own in this studio unit we are using as a guest suite which also has a tiny, not so cute kitchen prime for a makeover. If this does not go in there, I will be impressed. So get ready for DIY decor tips galore as we try and make this rundown kitchen look expensive. But not actually expensive because we're not gonna spend that much money on it. video you guys we are going to take that kitchen and make it look on trend beautiful and expensive for a fraction of what you would usually spend on a kitchen makeover it's right off the studio bedroom that you saw Joey so expertly decorate so we're gonna keep with that neutral theme we have so much paint but all the paint that we have is like colorful for the house and since we want to go a little bit more neutral in here I got some new color little samples Neutral colors just tend to be better for resale, for all that stuff. So I mean, if we went to sell our house right now, no one would want it. <laughs> Pretty it's so much, colorful. Because we have a like, pink kitchen. Yeah. I really like this, and then in contrast with like a whiter white. We're painting the cabinets with this beautiful paint color called Baby Fawn. We're doing Swiss coffee on the walls, which is a warm white. To get new cabinets, it can set you back thousands of dollars. So oftentimes, just a coat of paint can completely transform the look for a lot less moolah. And what's great also about neutral tones is you can do mixed metals with them really easily. Obviously appliances are where a kitchen can really shine and look high end. However, we don't have high end appliances and no, we are not gonna be spending any money on getting new appliances. So I'm going to be using some DIY tricks to just update these to make them look new and different, adding some contrast. But I'm also gonna be doing a lot of other beautiful things around the appliances that are gonna kind of elevate them as well. It's all just, you know, rising tide raises all ships and canoes, right? That's the slogan. <laughs> Let's talk countertops. You could paint them out, but if you're a renter, I've seen so many DIYs with people using like a marble contact paper on their countertops to freshen them up, make them look different. But something I've been wanting to do, and I think it's a really good tip, because it's so in right now in interior design, is to hone your countertops. So it basically means essentially sanding the countertop into a more matte finish. If you look at beautifully, expensively designed rooms, there's a lot of layering of textures and sheens. You don't have to just have shiny. And so this going matte, I think is gonna totally upscale our little disaster of a kitchen. <laughs> well, we'll try it at least. All right, guys, gonna quickly tell you about State Farm, who's sponsoring this portion of the video. One thing we all need for our homes and our cars is good insurance. The hardest thing we all do in our lives is balancing our various projects and expenses and making sure that we can actually do everything we wanna do in life. If you've been pouring your heart and soul into fixing up a home like we have, you definitely understand how important it is to protect it. State Farm knows that you're creative and you also have a lot of things you wanna do while staying within a budget. They have options to get a surprisingly great rate while you can still continue to make improvements and have insurance. For surprisingly great rates that fit any budget, like, like a, a good, good neighbor. Wait, a starting note. Like, like a good neighbor. State Farm is there. Call or 
go to statefarm.com to get a quote today. Thank you, State Farm, for sponsoring this portion of the video. Yeah. All right, so in order to change the finish on this countertop, I'm gonna have to create a ton of dust. So safety first, I'm gonna wear a respirator and I'm gonna wear some goggles. So you could in theory hone your countertops with sandpaper, it would just take you a really long time. So I'm using my angle grinder. This is a super easy tool to use and it's super inexpensive. You get them for less than hundred bucks and you can use them for so many projects you do. I'm just putting a masonry sanding disc on this and I'm going to take off the top of this countertop. All right, so one of the things we're gonna do to sort of elevate these cabinets, which is a really cool trick, is we're gonna just pop out the middle of the cabinets using this router. So basically, the center of this cabinet is a floating piece of wood. Um, so you can actually just router around the edge and pop this out. Um, obviously, if you're renting, you probably can't do this to your cabinets, but you get the same effect by doing like a peel and stick caning or a peel and stick wire, or put some fabric in there with some adhesive or whatever. We'll see. Okay, so our next tip is about adding visual interest to your cabinet. I have this metal sheeting. It's in this silver finish right now. I think I'm gonna spray paint it black. Then to attach it, I think we're gonna use some heavy duty hot glue in combo with just some little nails. And this one obviously reads more like a mesh. This one reads a little bit more decorative. You can see through this one more easily. We're just doing this on the upper cabinet. So obviously up there we'll have the pretty plates and glasses behind it. This is really pretty. This one just has more of like almost like a caning vibe to it. And I like that we'll be able to see our pretty dishware through it. You can get these decorative aluminum sheets at basically any hardware store, cut them with tin snips. I'll be able to make inserts for all of these cabinets for less than $40, but visually it's gonna be worth so much more than that. done before if it has been done credit to whoever's done it before but I've not seen this done these are actually for garage doors they're like garage door embellishments because they're made to stick on metal garage doors and I was like wait a minute you know what else you can stick magnets on a fridge so I was like could this be a way to add some design intrigue it also hangs whips on the wall okay is it too dominatrix no dominatrix what are whips Medieval. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> you're talking about like a carrot, like it looks like like a, a, like a horse. Like a castle. Like a horse would live here. Joey, it's called modern farmhouse. Okay, you take like industrial farmy looking things, make them chic. It's like the most popular design style ever. I'm gonna I get personally a whip. like European 1600s architecture. <laughs> so on a fridge. <laughs> I'm really excited because I'm going to spray paint the fridge, oven, and microwave handles, plus the little dials. Obviously these are inexpensive appliances, but I think just adding a contrast color, so black against the white, is going to make these just look a little bit more upscale. Also, I'm using this appliance epoxy. It's washable, moisture resistant. Let's see how this goes. something I was gonna try for inside. We did something else. An inexpensive way to instantly upgrade your space is to replace lighting fixtures, especially if you have something just like super Absolutely. generic like that. And this is an option for renters. A lot of people don't think it is, but if you save the original fixture that's in your rental, you can replace your fixtures, live with the new beautiful ones, and then swap them out before you leave. Obviously hire an electrician, but like really just an hour of an electrician's time can give you a total transformation in your lighting. Look at how it looks next to our newly painted walls. So yeah, anyways, Joey, you up for it? 
No, no, you take that light there. No, no, I don't want to. Die. That's, I'm not. I'm here to just talk. <laughs> Okay, so let's discuss our plan here. I've laid out some of the design elements so you guys can see everything together. Joey did such a beautiful job honing the countertop. I learned a new word to describe what we did. Some people honing? call it leathering. Because it's kind of like you're, the, the texture I is now like almost, kind of, almost like a leather, you know? That makes a lot of sense because I think what we've been talking about throughout is adding texture, right? And the different finishes and patinas. I think this is really successful with like darker colored countertops as well. I like this shade and I like it with like our cabinets. This is the backsplash tile I'm thinking about doing. It is peel and stick, which is a renter slash budget-friendly kitchen makeover's best friend, this peel and stick tile, it's not actual tile. I'm thinking because we're going light here and we have these lighter cabinets and the countertops are light, I do want contrast. So since we've sanded them down so nicely, we're gonna do another experiment and we're going to do some stain. Here goes nothing. Ooh. Ooh. Oh gosh. What? Okay. No, it's just very liquidy. Jeez Louise, it's like water. What the? <laughs> oh no! Did nothing to the countertop. Like looks it has looks great on a paper towel. I've never attempted to stain quartz before, and I can tell this stain is not gonna work. <laughs> DIY fail. All right. <laughs> Update. Basically, we're idiots and we're trying to stain quartz countertop that we more than sanded. But like the whole thing of quartz is that it doesn't stain. That's why people have quartz countertops. It is very resilient. So now we're gonna try this gel stain, which you leave on for like three minutes, then wipe off. I have higher hopes for this oil-based gel stain because whoa, this is going on way thicker. With the gel stain, you wanna apply it and let it sit for a little bit and then go back and wipe off the excess. Yeah, that's more what I want right there. It's leaving this darker look to the stone, but you're still able to see all the textures and the different colors of stones kind of peeking through. So it does still look like a real stone countertop, but it's a darker color, which is exactly what I wanted. All right, so we're obviously sealing the countertop with a uh, nice poly to just make sure that it's, you know, once it dries, it'll be food safe. Going with a satin finish, which is like basically a step above matte, but we want to keep these not very shiny because obviously that's what we changed it from. excited to get this on the wall. Backsplashes are just so important. You can get removable ones so that it's renter friendly. Mm -hmm. The other big change we're gonna do in here for very little money is the backsplash. Peel and stick tile. It's really an easy install process. I killed a roach with this last night so I'm not sure if there's roach guts on it. Cute. I definitely encourage picking a peel and stick option that doesn't look too plasticky. I really liked these for how matte they are and how stone-like it looks. Okay, here we go. This is exciting. Whoa, 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 whoa. Don't, don't lock it in yet. Too late. <laughs> too late. Push, push, push. Oh, 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 oh. This is so exciting. There are so many ways you can update your backsplash. Obviously, you can go the traditional route and actually add tile. We're doing this peel and stick tile, but a peel and stick wallpaper looks gorgeous. You could paint something. You could put up some aluminum tin tiles also look really cool. There's just so many options. So yeah, messages, backsplash it up. If you're looking for one project to do in your kitchen that's gonna just like drastically change everything that you can do by yourself, super simple, super inexpensive, check out some peel and stick tile. This is a really cool product to upgrade your kitchen. Another 
tip on making your kitchen look expensive? Make it look clean! This face, you can see it, it's more yellowed than the oven door. So the goal is, I'm trying to get this plastic face that is gonna have the new black knobs on it to be more of a pure white to match the rest of what's going on. With a TikTok hack, <laughs> I actually saw this because for whatever reason, I get sneaker talk videos on my TikTok algorithm where people spruce up old sneakers. And a lot of times white sneakers have yellowed on the sole. So these geniuses use Salon 40 volume cream, you know, like the peroxide. They use that on the yellowed sneakers and make them white again. I'm also gonna make it I'm gonna make it that much more of a cleaning product by adding Equal Parts baking soda. Use a nice stiff toothbrush and scrub. So basically we're just gonna scrub the solution on our yellowing appliances, let it sit for about four hours and wipe it off. is looking so different and so good and so expensive for not very much dough. Now we're gonna talk about the finishing touches because we literally just have a few little things. Let's talk about under cabinet lights. Lighting is one of those things that makes a space look very expensive and you have glowy light coming from different fixtures as opposed to just one glaring overhead fixture, ew. Other important tip. You yeah. can change the color temperature on these, which yes. is super key because you don't want to get got these. Yep. really fugly, like bright white. No. You know, somewhere in like the 4,000 Kelvin world. In an upscale kitchen, you'd have wiring running through your kitchen to power under cabinet lights. We don't have that here, but we have these really easy to install and inexpensive battery operated lights. So on the backsplash, I want to install this bar. So this is basically like a utensil bar, you add these little hooks and then some little accent items, a way to bring in some styling that isn't cluttering up your countertops. The other metal thing we're adding is this new faucet, which is inexpensive and a really easy way to update your otherwise very basic thing. You just oh, unscrew your old one yeah. and screw your new one in. Such a difference. We have everything installed and done. It looks so good. And now it's time for the jewelry of the room, I call it, adding all those bits and bobs to just really pull the whole design story together. And oh my gosh, I'm so excited to see how it looks finished. All right, we're gonna bring in this table with this stool, I think. We got some styling stuff up here. This is a small kitchen, small amount of counter space, but we did have enough room to fit a low profile little table. It adds obviously a place to sit, enjoy some food, but also some extra counter space. There's something about plants and fresh foliage and fruit in a bowl that just really make a kitchen look pulled together and like whoever's in there knows what they're doing. So that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna go around, pick some of our beautiful fruit that's growing on our trees here at our house, and of course, some beautiful greenery and some flowers. You know, add something here, but obviously having a mirror in a small space is great, reflecting what's going on, but not the huge, gigantic one that used to be in here. This is our Mr. Kate Greenwich rug. Oh no. Yeah, okay, okay, okay. <laughs> Head and lap. <laughs> you can't see the rug, we're covering it. So the cherry on the top of this design is adding one soft element, one really tiny,
tiny Mr. Kate rug. This is a two foot by three foot rug. We sell a couple of styles in this size and you can also do the world's smallest rug cuddle on it. I, de I definitely think we achieved expensive looking on a budget. How to make your kitchen look expensive on a budget in a tiny kitchen Check on it a out. tiny rug. dramatically we changed the look of this kitchen. I mean it went from like almost cabin kitchen to now like chic farmhouse, elevated, very expensive looking for around $400. I think it is a huge transformation. I feel like this is such a fun challenge to make things look expensive on a budget. I'm thinking maybe next we tackle a bathroom, try to make a bathroom look expensive. Let me know if you think that's a good idea down in the comments. We've got a few more bathrooms that really need some help. Ah! Hey, drill man. We're trying to film over here. <laughs> he's got, he's really doing something important. <laughs> Quiet on the set. <laughs> 